Welcome to another fairly quick RD Works Learning Lab. Now, in the last session, I gave you news that um, I was going to be able to—I was going to make available a small batch of these heads. Demand has been, to say the least, overwhelming. My small batch was consumed within about two hours of me publishing the video, and so consequently, I have now got another larger batch underway. Now, I've made it clear, hopefully, in previous videos that this head will only fit on the red sail type clone machine if you have one of these brackets from Cloudray. Now the problem is over 50% of my inquiries have been for people that have not got a 15mm rail on here. They've got a 12mm rail and they're asking can we fit this bracket onto the 12mm rail bearing. The answer is no. Now look, here's a little simulation of the bearing that you will have on here. It's much smaller than this bearing. And as a consequence, this will not fit on there. It's designed to it's designed for the 15mm rail bearing. Okay, it'll be fairly simple to design an acrylic bracket instead of this steel bracket. But when I sat down and tried to achieve it, I'm extremely worried that there is not enough rigidity in the bracket itself. Even though I manufactured it from 5mm acrylic, the glue joints, everything, because of this dimension here, where we're, bitting, we're getting a lot of, if you like, pendulum risk. We've got mass at the bottom here which is trying to swing around when you accelerate this head backwards and forwards. And the whole point of this lightweight head is so that you can change the settings on your machine and make it go really fast. You can put the accelerations up from 3,000 to 30,000 for example. Which is what I've done on this machine and on the other machine. So unfortunately I couldn't design a risk-free acrylic bracket to do the job. And so we're going to have to stay with this bracket here which is the cloud ray bracket but hopefully what I've done as part of this kit now is solved the problem it's become a more universal kit and for those people with the 15 millimeter rail system you buy this bracket and use it exactly as it is so there is another piece of bracketry that goes on the front which allows you to fit your standard head on if all else fails and you don't like this but you will be throwing this piece of the bracket away and using it just these two pieces here. Now in your kit that you will receive we have a new addition and that's this little pack here. And this little pack here is a conversion kit between the 12 and the 15 millimeter rail. So come on in and let me show you what I've done. So we empty the contents of that little pack out. Now the first thing you're going to do is drop your piece of perspex onto a flat surface and in here you'll find four M4 nuts. You should be able to drop those nuts into the hexagonal recesses that I've provided. If the, if the nuts do tend to fall out, just place this on top of your bearing block and put your nuts in and then they won't fall out. Now we've got another plate which sits on top like that. Okay, now there's countersinks on this side of the plate and you've got these little M3 screws and you'll be given a key so you can pop the screws through the holes and with a bit of luck they should screw into your bearing block. Now if you look carefully at your bearing, you'll probably find that you've already got a packing piece between your bearing and the plate which sits on top of the bearing. So if you've got a 4mm plate, we're going to add another 2mm because we've got two 3mm plates here. But that has now converted your 12mm bearing into basically a 15mm bearing. And so when we come to fit this on here now, it's a perfect fit. Okay, so that gives you the location that we're after. Okay, so it's a matter of now lining that up with the bearing block. And 
putting your fixing screws into the nuts that are captivated in the plate underneath. So even though we've got relatively weak material between the bearing and the steel plate, because of the way in which it's used, we're gaining maximum rigidity and strength and we're not throwing anything away from this bracket. And so consequently you can now just mount the head on this bracket. Now as I mentioned in the previous video, within this kit there is a small jig. So that plugs onto your existing plate and there are one, two holes there that you should be drilling through, two and a half millimetres diameter and then you can open them up and put screws with nuts on the back if you wish because there are nuts in this pack that will do that um, or you can tap these holes now the holes the good news is that in the future the chances are that you won't have to do that because the new batch being manufactured by Cloudray at this very moment in time have already got these holes being added so in future this bracket will already be prepared for this head mount. This kit contains everything that you need for A mounting it onto a China Blue machine, modifying the bracket if you want to fit this head onto the existing cloud ray bracket that you may already have. There's a jig for modifying the bracket. There's a pack of screws here with springs for making the adjustable number two mirror system that I did for the China Blue machine. So these two pieces go together if you wish to make a new bracket, which I suggest you would be well advised to do because the adjustment, the Y adjustment on the China Blue machine is difficult. And every time you adjust it, you're going to have to reset the X. Whereas with this new system, which controls the movement of Y, you won't have to keep resetting X. Choice is yours. And then finally, we've got this little bearing adapter kit that's included as well. So I hopefully have now got all the main options for your machines covered if you wish to fit one of these lightweight heads on there. Now, well, there are pieces that you must have and pieces that you might want to have. A must have is one of these lens tubes. Now I've modified all my lens tubes so that they are now parallel. I've taken the knurled shoulder off. All right, so I can use these upside down or this way up. Now, if you haven't got facilities for machining this, don't worry, because it will work perfectly okay if you always use it this way round. If you're strapped for cash or you don't like spending cash, then what you've got here is everything that you want in one tube. You get the choice of either 50.8, which is 2 inches, or 63.5, which is 2.5 inches. If you get the 2.5 inch one and do this, this is 2.5 inch, and that's 4 inches. So you can use a 2.5 or a 4 inch lens in this lens tube. Equally well, you can turn it upside down like that, and now you can put a 2 inch lens in this end. So you only, need, you only need to buy one lens tube for all those combinations. If you want to commit lenses to tubes and you do not want to change the lenses, you just want to keep them in the tube, then you're probably going to need at least three and maybe four lens tubes. One of them is going to be two and a half inch, one of them is going to be two inch, and this one, it doesn't matter what it is, because you're going to use that four inch at the back. And this one, it doesn't matter what it is. It could be a two inch or a two and a half inch, because that again has got four inches at the back. But in this particular instance, it will have nothing in it at all, because the lenses will be in the nozzle. This is a compound engraving nozzle. Some people like to commit lenses to lens tubes and mark on here what they've got in each lens tube and the distance they need to be setting for optimum focus. So all that information you can engrave on this black anodized surface here. So as soon as you go for this lightweight head you must buy at least one of these lens tubes to use in here. And I would then suggest that you also buy a number three nozzle I think it's called which is a pointed nozzle with a two and a half millimeter hole in the bottom. When you buy it 
make sure you buy it with a fitting. So your minimum requirements for this will be you need a 20 millimeter diameter lens you choose the focal length that you want the most common will be two inch although two inch two and a half inch works very very well as well for cutting. I would suggest you must buy a 20 millimeter diameter mirror to go in here. It's got to be 20 millimeters diameter you may have 20 millimeter diameter mirrors on your machine already in which case you will not need to buy a new mirror. Maybe it's gold looking in which case I would suggest you do need to buy a new mirror. Even the best gold mirrors are, can I say, at risk because the gold is so atomically thin you don't need many cleans before you wear through the gold and what's underneath the gold will generally not be mirror-like. It will be flat but it will absorb energy and heat the mirror up. So by far and away the only recommendation that I would personally make is you buy a molybdenum mirror which are basically bulletproof because they're molybdenum all the way through you can treat them with complete disrespect almost keep them clean but you can be fairly harsh with your cleaning techniques and it will still work it will still serve you well and even though I've made all these additions because I've bought a larger batch of pieces this time the price has come down a little bit and I can add these extra pieces in and still keep it at 30 pound including postage to anywhere in the world. I thought it was going to be short, but hey, I had to get a lot of information in. So thank you very much for your time. And I hope that takes away a lot of the questions that I might get in future. You know exactly what you're going to get in this kit now and how you can use it. Until the next time, thanks, and I'll catch up with you then.